Hello, my name is Mike Knut Strip, and right now we are discussing motivation, at least part one of motivation. It's a large topic. Uh, there are many different theories of motivation. They all have uh, some merit. They all speak a little bit to human nature. And of course, understanding motivation being pretty important. You know what motivates you to do things. You know what motivates other people. So hopefully you're able to get more out of yourself and others with an understanding. The theories we're going to get it into are the, are the best, the classic theories of motivation. Well, these are accepted fairly universally as the best explanations about why people do the things they do. You get into Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, theory X and theory Y, two-factor theory of motivation, three needs, theory, uh, personality theory, theory of motivation, and goal setting. Okay, so perhaps the most famous theory of motivation is Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And Abraham Maslow studied healthy people, highly functioning individuals. All right, And he found that motivation works in a stepwise or a ladder fashion. First need that needs to be met is physiological needs. When that's met, you move to safety needs. When that's met, social, then esteem, then self-actualization. So for Maslow, uh, <clears throat> unmet needs motivate. In, in other words, you start at the bottom of the ladder, the bottom of the pyramid, and then once these needs are met, then you move to the next level. And only until these needs are met do you move to the next level, and the next level, and then the next level. Physiological needs are concerned with survival, you know, food, water, air, that sort of thing. Safety uh, needs, uh, of course, uh, your safety, uh, both the near term and long term. Uh, but like organizations address safety needs through things like benefit plans, retirement, and safe working conditions. Social needs, getting along with other people, self-esteem and esteem of others. Uh, organizations get uh, get involved with that when they do th uh, make awards, for example, or allow you to do work that makes it, that allows you to feel important. Self actualization is being all that you can be. Kind of a tough one to uh, describe. Top level of the pyramid here. Not, I'm not sure how well you can read this, but um, self actualization is different for different individuals. Maslow found that the highest highest functioning people were self-actualized, okay? And maybe activities you can think of where you just lose a sense of time, you get into a sense of flow, that might be self-actualizing activities, things you'd almost do for free, you know? Um, that might be a self-actualizing activity. That's the highest level. So how does this apply to, uh, to work? Well, <clears throat> as, uh, as managers, maybe we want to allow people to, to meet all these needs in some way as best we can. Jobs are different. But also, don't pull out the lower part of the ladder and expect people to be functioning up here. You know, you want people to go above and beyond. You want them to, to be honest and uh, reliable, um, look well for your interests. If they're worried about their safety, you know, of their jobs or their physical safety, or even their physiological needs being met, they're not going to carry your company to the higher level. You know, so don't pull the don't pull the rug out from under employees and expect them to be functioning at a high level. All right, that's Maslow's hierarchy needs. Perhaps the most famous need theory. Next one I want to talk about is McGregor's theory X and theory Y theory. Now theory Y, and according to McGregor, there are two types of managers. There are theory. X managers and theory X managers believe they believe I'm kind of arranged my stuff here a little bit. They believe or assume that workers are lazy, don't want to work. Theory Y managers assume or believe that there's a certain amount of self-direction in people. And it's not get this theory right. It's there are not theory X and theory Y employees. There are managers who believe this according to this theory, okay? And a key part of what uh, McGregor's saying is, you know, what you believe and expect, you get. This is also known as a self-fulfilling prophecy. 
I know you can't read that real well, but self-fulfilling prophecy. What you expect is what you get out of people. Ever wake up in the morning and you expect people to be angry, whatever, you're angry. People give it back to you. People give it back to you what you expect. So McGregor argues that, he argues that you know, at least in part, try to expect the best out of your people and you know, hopefully they'll give it to you. Obviously some jobs maybe are a little mundane, maybe a little boring, and so you've got to watch over them a little closer. Um, push them a little harder, whatever, and be a little more theory X in your assumptions. But still, if you if you give the people the benefit of the doubt, um, find ways that they can exercise self-direction, they'll give you more of this theory Y type behavior. So it's the manager's expectations and beliefs about people that determine how motivated people are. Obviously, a theory X manager it's going to have some demotivating characteristics. They're going to watch people closely. They're going to be critical and negative. Or a theory why manager might be a little more optimistic, allow people to set some of their own uh, goals and that kind of thing. Gregor's theory, X theory, Y. Next, I want to talk about famous theory motivation called <coughs> Herzberg's motivator or motivation hygiene theory. Motivator hygiene theory. And uh, for Herzberg, there are two categories of factors, hygiene factors, which just lead to neutral or a zero level of motivation. These demotivate people, and then motivators. These motivate people. All right. So we can have all you want of these hygiene factors. You're just going to get to the zero point. But to really get people going, you need hygiene plus you need motivators. Looking at these, what do you see? You can make some, um, some, oh, I guess, uh, categorizations about these two. Uh, all right. Well, what you might see is that hygiene factors tend to be more extrinsic or outside the person, whereas motivators tend to be more intrinsic or inside the uh, the person. Okay. Herzberg uh, came along in the 1950s when American industry, quite honestly, was doing very well. But it was doing well, at least in large part, due to the fact that the productive capacity of other countries had been destroyed after World War II. So companies had a lot of money. Uh, union, unions were growing big. And unions focus on bread and butter things like extrinsic factors. Uh, managers were perplexed. Here we are. We're, at the, we're, we're making lots of money. We're paying our people very well. And they're not motivated. And Herzberg said, well, if you want them to be motivated, of course, you know, you want to have these, but you really need intrinsic things as well. Okay. <clears throat> so that's Herzberg's motivator hygiene theory. Partly a function of the, uh, of the, the times as well, uh, as to why it was, uh, it was a very, a very influential, influential theory of motivation. Okay, McClellan's three needs theory. The idea is that there are three types of people and thus motivated differently. Of course, all these, you know, might be present in, in to a certain degree in all individuals. People have us, uh, need for achievement, need for affiliation, need for power. Affiliation is social need. But that one of these is preeminent and holds sway over the individual more than the others. Oh, well, quite my question's down here. What motivates the types and what demotivates them? Well, people with a high need for achievement are motivated by accomplishment. And oftentimes they tend to be demotivated by a fear of failure. Okay. Uh, and surprisingly, they studied need for achievement quite a bit. And they found that people with a high need for achievement tend to choose moderately challenging tasks. Why do they tend to choose moderately challenging tasks? Well, you, the failure rate is much less than if you choose really difficult tasks. Okay? People with a need for affiliation like to be around other people. They don't want to be closed away in a cubicle or something like that or behind closed doors. They want to be around other people, and their fear is of uh, rejection or being isolated. Okay, need for power. We need to talk about a need for power, people with a high need for power, because most likely the folks that you're 
going to work for out of the three types, the most likely type is a person with a high need for power that you're going to work with. You know, they like control, they, they like status, um, they like being at the top. So, you got to be careful with working with these folks. You know, an egalitarian attitude isn't necessarily going to work. <clears throat> You've got to maybe stroke their ego a little bit, but you got to avoid challenges. At least direct challenges to their power, you know, because that's why they're there. It's tough being a, a manager or a leader. There are a lot of costs to be paid. And these folks, because their need for power, are willing to pay the price. So don't don't challenge them directly. If you have suggestions, put it in terms of their goals. Like if, you know, if we want to achieve this project uh, that's important to you, we need to consider using Julie or getting her input. You know, what about if we really want to get this done? You know, do you think this might help us do it? You know, something like that, as opposed to uh, what you got there is wrong. You, I don't think that's going to work. Frame it in terms of the power person's goals. All right, Collins three needs theory. Final one I want to get in here. Motivation part of one is goal setting theory. There have been hundreds of studies on goal setting, and some uh, you know how do you frame goals? What are the best way to do goals? And what studies have found is that goals need to be specific and measurable. You need to be able to tell whether you're achieving it or not. You, know, you sell 10 cars last week or not. You know, very specific goal. They need to challenge you a little bit. Oh, you know, not be overwhelming, but they need to challenge you a little bit. And you need to have feedback. You need to know how you did. Some tasks just don't give a lot of feedback on how you're doing. Uh, or sometimes some managers don't say, well, this was good or this wasn't. People need feedback for goals to work. And then, as I know, your public announcements enhance commitment to goals, as does competition with other groups. All right, well, what, I, what do I have this guy here, this picture of this guy? Who is this? Some of you probably already recognize Jim Carrey. And Jim Carrey credits a specific challenging goal with feedback for at least part of his success. Some of you know uh, Jim Carrey's story. For a while, his family lived in a van, worked uh, maintenance. He was dirt poor, living in a hotel room, a uh, you know, bad apartment in the Los Angeles area. Discouraged, and he post-dated himself a check. Okay, post-dated himself a check. Five years in the future for $10 million. And he carried that check around in his wallet. You know, almost to the day, he went from being impoverished to being wealthy, you know, for the amount of his check. He gives that, you know, that story and that uh, credit to that check. You know, other people have give, uh, say, well, one good, uh, good thing is to, you know, write your goals down and put them on your refrigerator, for example. Write your goals down, put them in the drawer. There's something about goals that pulls people along to their achievement. You want them to be worthy. Maybe you don't want them to be uh, overwhelming, but, but goals create a, uh, a distinction, a uh, difference between where you are and where the goal is. And slowly, your mind prioritizes and you work towards that goal. All right, so that's motivation part one. We talked about Maslow's theory of motivation. McGregor's Theory X and Theory Y, we talked about Herzberg's Motivator Hygiene Theory, McClellan's Need Theory, and then Goal Setting Theory of Motivation.